I have at my fingertips endless entertainment. And they'd be like, oh my God, you own all of the billions of people in this box. And you'd be like, yes, I own all of the billions of people in that box. It is my box, so I own them all. And they'd be like, well, how do we get the little people out so they can fight a war for us? Before we get started with today's video, I've got a very important update. After returning to Instagram, we were then subsequently booted off again, and I have tried to combat this for well over a week now. It doesn't seem like they're going to let us back on. And Derek has pointed out that this is exactly where I need your help. In fact, you guys can get us back on Instagram. What you gotta do is follow the link in my video description, and I need you to like and comment under my Twitter post at Instagram. This is apparently the only way that they will see that they've made a mistake and reinstate my account. Why? this is important is there are several imposter accounts now pretending to be me that are straight up taking advantage of people in a myriad of ways that I'd rather not get into, which is disgusting. So for everyone's safety, this is ridiculous, but I should be on Instagram to avoid the imposter accounts from effing with people. So please follow the link to my Twitter tweet. Tell them that Psych Substance Official was removed for the wrong reasons and for everyone's safety, he needs to be reinstated. Now, assuming that doesn't work, I have made a second Instagram account where I'm going to be posting stuff like my workout updates. So if you guys want to follow me personally, you can go to Instagram and follow Adam is Psyched. This is the new account that I've made for myself in case Psych Substance Official doesn't get reinstated. Or even if it does get reinstated, I'm going to be using this account for, like I said, fitness updates and, um, you know, just personal stuff that's not drug related because honestly doing all this drug stuff gets a little old over the years and it's nice to branch out and show some of my other interests maybe. There is also still a really good chance that Psych Substance Official doesn't come back. Or if it does come back, we just get freaking deleted again because this is twice now that it's happened. And in that instance, then Adam is psyched is going to be the only way to, you know, hear my updates. Or if you guys want to be a part of the Q&A videos, Instagram is where I make those posts where I say, ask your question here. And then I answer those Instagram questions in YouTube videos. Yeah, let's see how fast we can get Adam is psyched to grow. As you can see right now, we have zero followers. Anyway, now that we got that really annoying part out of the way, let's dive head first into today's video. I have my table filled with sticky notes over here so that I don't mess up. And uh, it's telling me the first thing I need to do is tell you guys the title, which is the five drugs I wish I never tried and why. Clearly all the drugs I've tried have fried my brain if I can't even remember to do something as simple as make the title. Now this is a follow-up to the last video, which was called the five drugs I will never try and why. So instead of talking about things that I haven't done, let's actually talk about the five drugs, well the top five drugs that I have, but I wish I didn't do for various reasons reasons. And I do have to say that this list, especially the later entries, are most likely going to surprise some of you. So you really do need to make it till the end of the video so you can get a full grasp of uh, just what I'm talking about. Some of them will be expected, but some of them are going to shock you a little bit. So let's get rid of the elephant in the room first. At number one, we have Kratom. Because as all you guys know, I've been on an off and off, off and off, on and off battle with Kratom for a while now. And it's something that I definitely wish that I haven't done because I feel like the longer you're taking an opioid-based substance, granted Kratom isn't fully an opioid, it also works on serotonin and many other neurotransmitters in the brain. But I think primarily what causes its at least addictive potential is the fact that it's got Mitrogynous speciosa as one of its prime opioid agonists. And this makes it, um, you know, a very potent painkiller, a very addictive substance, and something that has the potential, I believe, to alter your brain maybe permanently. There are some studies that suggest it reduces the amount of gray matter in the brain. That's messed up. You need that. And let's look up on my phone just why gray matter is important. Gray matter, named for its pinkish gray color, is home to neuro cell bodies, axon terminals, and dendrites, as well as all nerve synapses. Here it says higher presence of gray matter has been associated with increased learning capabilities and improved memory, along with an increased sense of self awareness. <laughs> it says, well, gray matter can decrease with age. It is possible to increase the gray matter in the brain. Gosh, I sure hope so. I'm assuming just the opposite of all of those are present when you have a decreased amount of gray matter. The main reason though why I wish I never tried Kratom is because it has decreased the quality of my life overall. You find yourself only feeling alive really when you are taking your dose. For me, it caused a massive spike in my daily anxiety. It's very similar to smoking cigarettes. What I found with cigarettes were before you smoked, you were fine. But once you smoked, or at least for me, what it was like was 
the nicotine created this new special kind of anxiety only the nicotine could relieve. So it was like you would smoke and then your level of anxiety around, you know, needing the next cigarette would decrease. But then within a couple hours, it would slowly reach back up again and you'd have to keep smoking to keep periodically decreasing the anxiety caused by the cigarettes. Whereas if there was no cigarettes, the anxiety just wouldn't be present at all. So I find a lot of people who say smoking actually calms them down. It, it doesn't. What it's doing is it's calming down the anxiety created by the drug itself. I feel like Kratom does very similar, if not the exact same thing. I would feel anxious the longer I'd go without it, and then I'd take the dose, and then my anxiety would be relieved. It's a little slower than, than smoking. Thankfully, I wouldn't be dosing every two hours. You know, you can at least make it maybe four. And it's a very sinister, similar to smoking, in how slow it creeps up on you. Again, I'm only speaking for myself. There are some people who don't have these effects and who can take it long term um, with uh, supposed no downside at all. But for me, it was very negative because... I would start off by say maybe taking it once a day and then within a few months, like it's very slow how it would creep up, I would move on to two times a day and then I'd move on to three, four, and then before you know it, you're taking it all throughout the day just to relieve the anxiety caused by the drug itself and you very quickly feel like you are a slave to constantly redosing just to keep yourself at well, what you would be at normally. This is literally what it does to the brain. When you are constantly taking a substance, your brain is always trying to reach a state of homeostasis because if your brain is more often than not in a drug-induced state, it thinks that's the new normal. So it's going to, in its normal state, decrease the amount of you know neurochemicals or neurotransmitters that it releases to match the new high that the drug is giving you. So quite literally, when you're taking a drug long-term, you need that drug just to reach a state of feeling normal. And this means that kicking it gets harder the longer you're on it because the longer you're on it, the more the brain has adjusted for being on it as its new state of normal, meaning without it, you are feeling mega depressed, way lower than you ever were um, before you started taking it. So now you are quite actually in a lower mood as a result of less you know, positive hormones and neurotransmitters in the brain. So you get yourself into quite the pickle where it takes quite a while to recover uh, as a rule of thumb the longer you've been addicted to a substance then the longer it's going to take for your brain to return back to normal once administration has been ceased anyway that was pretty long let's move on to number two teleporting a couple years in the future i'm gonna say testosterone no i'm just kidding let's actually be serious for number two we've got alcohol alcohol i think unfortunately is still over glorified in our society a lot of people even discriminate between alcohol and drugs you know they call it drugs and alcohol when it really should just be called drugs alcohol is a drug a drug is a medicine or other substance which has a physiological effect when ingested or otherwise introduced into the body. And I regret taking it because alcohol was one of my first addictions. Along with cigarettes, uh, when I was younger, I ran away from my problems by getting absolutely blackout smashed numerous times to the point where I did things that I can't even say I regretted because I was so blackout drunk I didn't even remember doing them. I just know I sabotaged a lot of friendships and I probably caused some long-lasting damage to my memory. I mean considering I took it <clears throat> at the age of 15 up until like mid-20s, it's hard to say how I would be different without it. Maybe some of my addictive tendencies are because of all of that early alcohol abuse. There's really no saying just how much damage it could have caused because there was times when I was drinking a few times a week to the point of blackout. And I wish I never took it just for the sole fact of, you know, the potential damage that I will never know. And number three, another obvious one, we have my ADHD medication. I know guys, you know, the exciting ones are coming. I'm just saving the best for last, but let's cover this quickly. So things like, you know, Vyvanse, Adderall, Dexedrine, any amphetamine substance, which I was prescribed for my attention deficit, you know, hyperactive disorder. I regret taking it. And I've talked about this a lot before because it really, speaking of memory more so than the alcohol, oh my gosh, it really messed with my memory. So much so that during the first video I actually made talking about the negative effects of it, I actually forgot to mention one of the biggest negatives, which was its impact on my memory. Talk about ironic. I mean, I don't even know if my memory is fully recovered. I think it largely has, like, knock on wood, thankfully, but it'd be to the point where, like, daily I'd misplace things and, and frustrating stuff, like my keys. Like, you know that feeling, or if you guys have ever done this, where you're looking for your keys when you're actually holding your keys, or you're searching for your glasses while you're wearing your glasses? Imagine feeling like that 24-7. That's the best I can describe it. It's like constantly not knowing 
anything. And it's not just misplacing things. It's, uh, you know, keeping appointments, you know, what you have to do during the day, eating, absolutely anything that involves memory, which is basically all facets of fucking life was hindered because my memory was hindered to the point where it was like I was a goddamn goldfish. You can imagine what kind of impact that had on my relationship. (laughs) Oh, let's not go there. Beyond just my memory being devastatingly impacted, it was negative for, well, a myriad of very, very potent, lethal reasons. Vitally speaking on your heart, it can cause long-term damage cardiovascularly, which, um, you know, can obviously kill you. But beyond, you know, anything that serious, let's just talk about the immediate. Let's talk about the immediate negatives. Beyond memory, um, it really launched me headfirst into addictive tendencies where because it would give me this this rush that I would feel uh, every day I would take it, which again started slow. I started out one or two times a week, which over the course of a few years, this wasn't fast. This was slow. It's gradual how these things ramp up. It moved up to five or six times a week with maybe one day off. And when I'm in that state, when I'm constantly in a heightened pleasure mode, I slowly transitioned from using it to get a lot of work done, to just being a masturbation powerhouse. I would just sit there aggressively jerking off for hours. It it was, uh, it got to a dark place because it would just make me so goddamn horny. And it's so paradoxical in the sense where it makes you crazy horny, but at the same time, it decreases blood flow. It causes vasoconstriction. So your, your penis feels like it melts. Imagine trying to get a hard on with uh, melted ice cream for a dick. Yeah, no one wants to be dealing with that shit. Definitely regret those drugs. The short term negatives aside, like, you know, being a masturbation powerhouse aside, the long term negatives are, are, are very real. You start to feel like you need it for happiness because it implants you with a false sense of pleasure because it spikes your dopamine and serotonin daily so it's like you're in this heightened pleasure response state all the time and without it you just feel like absolute dog shit anyway let's move on to number four what is the fourth drug that i regret taking or that i wish i never tried Let's get a little controversial here and talk about something that isn't traditionally considered a drug, but it's something that almost all of us battle with that I really do wish I never fall fell into. And it's ironic because I started the video off talking about a new social account. That's right, social media. This is something that is, speaking of sinister, so sinister that most people who are addicted to it are in complete denial and they don't realize just how much it has absolutely decimated their lives. I think it's no coincidence that in recent time, fucking suicide rates are at all-time highs. What's happened is because people are so used to this instant gratification, this instant release of pleasure and feel-good hormones and neurotransmitters, It's like day-to-day life, whereas people used to enjoy things that were mundane. People used to enjoy using their imaginations. Oh my goodness, imagine that. I guess you can't because you're not used to using your imagination. But try to imagine how much fun it would be to read a book and to picture people, places, events, exchanges going on using nothing but the mind's eye. I believe humans are at our very base level creative masterminds. We are designed to design creative endeavors for ourselves throughout our lives. And I've found a direct correlation between my lack of enjoyment in life and my lack of new creative well, endeavors. And this is completely, you know, void of being addicted to any substances. Pretend I'm clean. There have been periods, oh my gosh, where I've been clean. And I really fell headfirst into being addicted to, um, you know, the instant gratification caused by even just the smart, not even just social media, just like fucking text messaging and all of this instant exchanges that we have that makes us feel more isolated and alone than we ever have before because we are now, I think, en masse becoming... Uh, well, social phobes. A lot of us getting massive degrees of social anxiety and those of you like myself who already had social anxiety, now it's heightened to the degree because we've built this new level of comfort around only communicating through this piece of fucking glass metal bullspit and now it's to the point where it's like we don't even we've convinced ourselves that we don't want social interactions and of course this is going to be mega heightened by all the shit that's gone on lately that's really pushing people away from each other and social media addictions i think are at an all-time fucking high if anything one of the i think the biggest cause and why it's so detrimental to our lives is because it causes this unnatural spike 
of you know dopamine it's an unnatural release of dopamine where like the more likes you get the more good you feel and people start doing these things where they're only posting pictures because they want the spikes of likes and good comments and then they quickly find that if they stop posting photos for a while like i mean if you're someone lucky enough to actually get likes and comments on your photos like you know they stop doing all of these things and they soon they lose their their flow of good feelings they lose their drug essentially and well they may have you know temporarily convinced themselves that they don't need it they soon find themselves feeling like they're a slave to it and quickly going back and people get in these these habits these merry-go-rounds where they delete their accounts and they rejoin them then they delete for real this time they delete them they rejoin them that's the same as quitting a drug that, that's what happens you say you quit smoking and then like you might last a day and then you're like oh my god i can't do this i'm not ready yet i'll do it another day and you keep putting it off this is rebounding back to drugs this is a real addiction that people have because anything that deals in dopamine has the consequence to not just become addictive but to greatly you know be a detriment to your overall longevity of enjoyment in this world you have to be and this has gotten so difficult these days you have to be like you have to be in it for the long haul you have to be after the long-term gratification that joy that you get from completing a task that you worked really hard at that is going to instill you with true well as true as you can get forms of happiness where you actually feel genuinely rewarded for doing a good thing and for you know achieving something that you really wanted because the more effort you put into something the more gratifying the outcome becomes so it's like since we've replaced long-term gratification with short-term gratification people have become dopamine junkies and it's no surprise that once you get addicted to one form of dopamine release you are actually more likely to become addicted to other things that's right social media addictions are a foot in the door it's a as they used to call it gateway drug into other things like I think it's no coincidence that so many young people are addicted to their phones and they quickly become addicted to Adderall. They initially use it as a study aid, but it gets to the point where they feel like they need it just to operate because they're actually like unknowest to them. They've already been addicted to dopamine for so long that things like Adderall that actually release dopamine is just the natural evolution of their new addictive personality. And you got to realize what they're doing now is they start pairing the social media with the Adderall and then they're getting mega smacked mega slammed with dopamine and this is uh some serious shit that can land you in a similar boat as I've been in which makes you feel like your memory and all that shit is fucked and just rewind the video if you want to learn why it's so bad now let's move on to number five the final drug that I wish I never tried and for that we are gonna have to go on my boy acid that's right I wish I never tried acid why because it changed my life and it showed me how things could be so different and it showed me that everything I thought I knew was wrong. It showed me that we basically are living in the matrix and it essentially is the reason why I created this channel and I put myself in this situation and why the fuck am I doing any of this? No, I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> I don't regret taking acid. Oh, fooled you. That's probably one of the things that I'm so happy that I did because it changed my outlook on the world and it showed me that all this other shit that I thought was important is actually fucking bullspit and not necessary. And it allowed me to connect to a deeper level of creativity and it showed me just how, you know wrong we are in our lives and everything that we are taught to think of as important like this monetary monopoly game that we're all in it's just a tower of cards and really all it takes is a good you know light breeze to knock the whole thing down and we soon realize that <sighs> life is so much more simple and beautiful and we make things so much harder for ourselves than they need to be. Most of us are stuck in the survival point. Most of us don't make it to the point where we're actually making enough money to really, you know, enjoy the benefits of having money. Most of us never get there. But once you actually do get there, it is a slippery slope, my friend. And you soon find yourself, well, 
similar to the instant gratification, you soon fry your dopamine because it's like, look at it this way. This, this is what happened to me. You know, when I was a kid, I used to look forward to things like Christmas because, I mean, I had a paper route and it was hard to save up for stuff like a Nintendo 64. So you would look forward to Christmas when your parents, who mine were on welfare, but somehow they loved us enough to scrape together enough money to get me that Nintendo 64. Well, that was the time when you'd get those video games and I would cherish the shit, shit out of those. Like, I don't have a lot of toys, man. So I had some disgustingly old stuffed animals and we would play with those, me and my brother. And uh, we would play with old action figures that were like missing like arms. And that was like the main character of the story. We had, I create this backstory as to why he only had one arm. I had this one guy where um, he broke and all that was left of him was a head. It was a spawn, the very first spawn action figure head. So what I did was I took a metal chain and I got some pliers and I attached it to his his neck. So he was like, uh, he he looked like a snake with like a head with a chain. And uh, he was like this snake spawn head. We called him Chain Spawn. His move was whipping the other characters brutally. Everything was always about fighting. And they would have these, you know, these tournaments where um, they would fight and, and the loser would get smashed. Like quite literally smashed. So I would hold the head of the Chain Spawn and I'd use the metal to whip the other guys. He was, he was quite devastating. I mean, the other guys are just like smacking each other with plastic fists. Whereas Chain Spawn, he used his disadvantage of losing an entire body <laughs> to an advantage where he could destroy the other action figures with the actual metal that comprised of his new form. So... <laughs> This is how I grew up with like nothing, no exaggeration. Some Christmases, my parents would go to like the um, the food bank, and they would they would have these big garbage bags where they'd throw all these like donated toys in for Christmas. And like my parents would come home with, I, I thought it was great. I mean, we'd have garbage bags and garbage bags full of donated presents. Mind you, a lot of the presents were shit. <laughs> this is it was the wrong age group kind of thing. You're so excited to open it up, and you're like, oh, Polly Pocket. <laughs> So when you go from that to even just the kind of money I, I've made just doing videos, which obviously isn't huge because we're talking about drugs, but uh, I mean, like, if you look at our Patreon page, we used to be making eight grand a month and now we're at like three. So people are like, Adam, how are you feeding your family when you used to rely on Patreon? Well, you know, we sell hoodies and stuff. We sell the blankets. So, you know, sales are pretty decent. But if you do want to help us, you know, get that Patreon back up. It's my fault because I suck at Patreon. Join our Patreon and help us grow that so we can continue supporting the channel and get that editor hired. But anyway, so even when I just made, you know, decent money from doing these videos, it was like, whoa. I didn't know what to do with it. It was like every day was Christmas. I was buying video games. I was buying unlimited N64s, you know? <laughs> Oh no. Ah shit. So the the main this camera just overheated. I bought the 6400 because the 6500 which I was using before overheats and this one's not supposed to. God damn it. They lied to me. It overheated and shut off. Anyway, that means we got to hurry up and wrap this up. What the hell are you talking about, Adam? You know what? Screw it. We'll continue the video just with this guy. We got to finish the video over here. Let's move the mic a little bit. There we go. Easy. Easy fix. So yeah, what the hell am I talking about? I thought, that this, Adam, I thought you were making a video about the five drugs you regret taking. What has this turned into? Well, welcome to my life. Things are not as they as, as, as they start off. Everything changes and everything, everything is different than you expect. Yep, this is just the usual stuff that I go through. Anyway, I reached a point where every day kind of felt like Christmas. I was just buying myself so many little gifts here and there. And, you know, it doesn't take much to please me. I don't need a Lambo or a Ferrari or anything like that. Just being able to buy myself some fucking Warhammer to paint was like super exciting. Or the new Pokemon game, super exciting, man. What I'm trying to say is the fifth drug that I wish I never did, you know, if, if I'm being honest, is probably going to be, um, it, it's YouTube. Hey Adam, why aren't you talking about smoking? Like, what are you actually talking about? Are you off your ass today? Yeah, probably. I... I was not designed for this. It's been tough to create a form of balance because I don't think I'm the kind of person who really needs all of this. And then I get into this this constant debate in my head where it's like, why do I want to grow? What, what, what does growth mean? More money? As Derek pointed out in the video, it's not necessarily more money, Adam. Growth means helping and educating more people. And it's like, that I can get on board with. That is, that you're right, that is exciting. 
Um, I got really stuck in thinking about this as like like a monetary thing because yeah, it would be nice to make more money, but it's not 100% necessary. I guess I started to feel like there was a cap on the amount of people that we could teach. And that's probably because I started feeling super stressed and overwhelmed and I fell back on, onto old addictions. I feel like I'm just no good to anybody unless I am as healthy as I can be personally. So so yeah, like the, the number five drug that I regret doing was YouTube, but at the same time, not. And when I say YouTube as a drug, I mean like, you want to talk about people being addicted to getting like 20 to 50 likes on their videos? Now imagine the dopamine release that you're smacked with when you're getting like hundreds of thousands or millions of views on a video. Think about that new, that new threshold of a high, the hedonic treadmill. Think of the level it's at now, where it's like maybe getting um, 50,000 views on a video used to make you feel happy. Imagine when you're consistently getting like a few hundred thousand and then you get that 50,000, you're like, what did I do wrong? This is horrible because your treadmill speed has been raised and now it's like things that used to you know, give you a jolt of euphoria, you know, that dopamine release no longer trigger because your standards are so high. I hope you guys are following the trend here where the things that I regret taking all have to do with dopamine because we, I've said this before, we are not designed to have this type of dopamine response in our lives. Even just looking back at us and how we evolved on this planet, assuming you believe we did evolve on this planet, we weren't just, you know, implanted here by the aliens or whatever, but assuming we evolved, maybe with their help a little bit, we didn't have the the phones or the money exchange where we could literally live like kings. Like even the most poorest person today lives more like a king than the actual kings of the past. I mean, they didn't have refrigerators where they could store countless meals. They didn't have entertainment at their fingertips in the form of TVs. What we have today is insane. If you took a person from like thousands of years ago and drop them in like the poorest person's house, like I mean minimum wage, absolute base level house, even just with the amenities that are available to them, they'd be blown away. They'd be like, you're a goddamn king. Holy shit, show me your kingdom. And you turn on the TV, you'd be like, it's this, I have at my fingertips endless entertainment. And they'd be like, oh my God, you own all of the billions of people in this box. And you'd be like, yes, I own all of the billions of people in that box. It is my box, so I own them all. And they'd be like, well, how do we get the little people out so they can fight a war for us? <laughs> anyway, anyway, <laughs> you gotta, sometimes we get all crazy in our lives and you gotta take a step back and just think that, remind yourself even that we're in the future. This is the future. And we're in a very fucked up, weird future, man. I don't think the people of hundreds of years ago could even imagine some of the shit that we have going on today. The problems we have today are so bizarre compared to the problems they had back then. Like, I don't even want to get into this. Yeah, let's tie this all back into the five drugs that I regret taking. Like, the, the dopamine, what I'm trying to say is the dopamine hits that we receive today, we were not designed for. We were designed for those, you know, the long-term gratification. Like, the shortest amount of gratification we would get would be like picking berries like that was like a short-term dopamine spike which was necessary for our fucking survival so you got to think that dopamine release in terms of reward mechanisms is tied into survival so when you are tricking the brain into like you know you're releasing a video and you're getting a high from getting hundreds of thousands of views um, that is quite honestly tricking the brain into ungodly amounts of dopamine that we were never designed to, you know, come into contact with. And, and this is, I think, why we get so depressed and miserable because we are on that hedonic treadmill and we keep reaching these new heights and our, our physiology cannot keep up with it. We're not designed for it in the sense where we become numb to pleasure. Like, it's not like there's it's unlimited highs. Like, it's not like you just keep feeling better and better and there's, there's no, there's no, you know, ceiling to it. There is a ceiling and that's because what goes up must come down. If there was no ceiling to the highs, there'd be no ceiling to the lows and that's fucking scary. So it's like you reach a point where you are just numb to all of this. And, um, I say like, I regret doing YouTube. I don't mean like, I love the fact that I'm helping people, but it's like, I really, Goddamn minoxidil shit trying to grow my beard right now. That's why I'm itching, by the way. Minoxidil is itchy as hell. Anyway, I am grateful, but at the same time, it's like this has been a massive learning experience for me and learning how to mitigate the lows caused by, you know, falling victim to caring too much about stuff like video views. And it's hard not to care 
Like, like once you start seeing your stuff succeeding, it, it's hard to just like, you know, you're supposed to be at the Zen, you're supposed to reach this level of Zen where you can take a step back and it's like, whether it does good or bad, you feel the same about it. And that's the end goal. And I'm getting better at that now, but it's been, it's been fought hard fought to get here so like when i say i regret as the five drug like the the youtube as the drug i'm not just saying that for the sake of making controversial video like like i mean it and then there's other people who have made content who have issues with addiction who will say the same thing i mean i can think of some guys offhand i don't want to throw them under their bus here because it's up to them to actually talk about it or not but i have talked to other content creators that become popular some of them had to let it all go because it was messing with them so much so it's like they, they couldn't handle they actually could not handle um the rush that doing youtube was giving them because it brought them back into a very addictive state and uh, it can be dangerous now I'm not saying that I wish I didn't do YouTube, even though I'm saying like, you know, the five drugs I wish I never did. Like, like no, I'm not saying that. I just wish that I knew what I was getting myself, myself, I'm talking with accents, into so I could have better managed um, this experience. That's probably asking for too much because I feel like I had to be just thrown into the fire to work it out and make it out on my own. And like I said, I'm getting much better at it. But you gotta just, just think, if you're so used to say seeing these highs, like say now what do you think you feel like when all of a sudden you hit a low and like none of your videos are doing good it could be your fault maybe i just sucked and i can't come up with any good ideas you know i just don't feel like making videos like it happens we need breaks we all need breaks but now the channel's doing bad and it's like you got all of these good emotions tied into its success and now every time you look at it it pulls you down and it's like you feel like you're in this roller coaster where as long as your videos are doing good you, you're feeling good then they do bad and you're feeling bad it's um it's not healthy and it very much so reminds me of, well, it is like an actual drug. And I've been waiting for the perfect video to talk about this because more people need to know just how unhealthy some of these avenues can be to your mental health. And you'd say, oh, that's first world problems, man. You're lucky you've got the craziest, coolest job ever. I'm not complaining about that. I am simply telling you guys that from an addictive, like an addict standpoint, this is some dangerous next level real shit. Dopamine is not to be fucked with. And the spike that you're getting hit with when you're getting millions of views for some of these videos, that's not a joke, man. Not a joke. And that seriously numbs some people to the point where they actually feel like the only high they can move on to after that. And this is why people in rock and roll and movies turn to drugs because they're getting such a dopamine hit just naturally. Oh my God, of course, drugs are the next step. You know, it's the next rung to reach because it's like, there's no other way for them to, you know, get, you know, even feel anything. Like, it's not that they're trying to get higher and higher. It's, they're literally numbed. You gotta understand, it, it's numbing. And then you need the drug to start feeling anything at all again. So, what's the solution? Oh, I actually, I think I know what the solution is, but let's save that for another video. Anyway, this has gone on long enough. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button, show your support. Again, just in case you forgot, follow the link in the description and follow our new Instagram. Adam is psyched, all one word. Adam is psyched. This is hilarious. I'm just talking about social media addiction in the video that I'm ironically trying to get my Instagram back for. See how messed up that is? Just actually think about that for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah follow us on there go on to the this is like an addict saying oh yeah i'm addicted to meth but um give me my fucking meth give me my meth like that that's what this is like or you can go on to <laughs> i can't even do it with a straight face it's hilarious <laughs> help us get sex substance official reinstated to keep all you guys safe from the imposters um follow the link in the description and retweet you know the the, the twitter posts I made at Instagram and like to be totally honest with you guys I don't give a shit like I kind of wanted to stay down but whatever I have to it's like part of the business model at this point you gotta have the fucking Instagram so anyway let's grow my Instagram <sighs> if you guys enjoyed this video smash that like button let me know below what you thought of it this has been a very personal deep and real video and I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be able to relate to a lot of the stuff I've been saying here anyway Take care, guys. TRT update coming soon. Video on that to come. Anyway, 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 leave a comment below for the algorithm. Let's beat the shadow ban, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Cheers.